Hello everyone, it's Eric Strong, a practicing hospitalist and a clinical associate professor at Stanford University. Welcome to a new series here on Strong Medicine, which I'm calling Strong Diagnosis. In this series, I'll be talking about the process of clinical reasoning. Consistent with Strong Medicine in general, this series will assume a viewer who is intelligent, is motivated, and who knows nothing about this particular topic. So I'll be taking you from the absolute basics of what a differential diagnosis is, and will gradually progress all the way through some advanced topics, like the use of mathematics in making diagnoses, choosing diagnostic tests, and modeling decision making. This video will serve as an introduction to the subject of clinical reasoning in general, and an introduction to this course specifically. So let's just start off with the most basic of questions. What is clinical reasoning? Clinical reasoning is the collection of cognitive processes by which a clinician hypothesizes the possible diagnoses an individual patient may have, selects appropriate tests to confirm or refute their hypothesis, and develops treatment strategies for the diagnosis under consideration. It involves the incorporation of the clinician's knowledge of pathophysiology, the application of biostatistics and epidemiology, usually qualitatively, though the final videos in this series will discuss the use of statistics quantitatively, the consideration of the cost of both tests and treatments, both to the patient and to the healthcare system in which one is working, the integration of the patient's values and preferences, usually under a model referred to as shared decision-making, and lastly, the communication of one's thought processes to other healthcare professionals. There are actually two branches of clinical reasoning, and as typical for medicine, the common terminology is confusing. In common usage, the term clinical reasoning is usually applied just to diagnostic reasoning, that is, answering the question, what disease does this patient have? But there is also therapeutic reasoning, that is answering the question, how should we treat that disease in this patient? Clinical reasoning, both diagnostic and therapeutic, is imprecise. Situations often don't have one single right answer, and outstanding clinicians working with the same information can reach different conclusions. Throughout the series, I'll talk about why this happens, but as a spoiler, it's partly due to different previous experiences, cognitive bias, different weight given to the patient's values and preferences, and because in situations in which uncertainty or gaps in knowledge exist, Clinicians need to insert best guesses into their analyses, guesses which will vary from person to person. In addition to clinical reasoning being imprecise, it is also probabilistic. This means that even when using perfect reasoning, clinicians can still make misdiagnoses. And clinical reasoning is iterative. The reasoning process, whether it's focused on disease probabilities or treatment plans, is continuously updated with each new piece of relevant data. This course is organized into three parts, each consisting of six videos. Part one will cover the foundations of diagnostic reasoning. These videos will be relatively short and fully qualitative, meaning no math. Topics here include this introduction, diagnostic frameworks and differential diagnosis, semantic qualifiers and summary statements, illness scripts, problem lists, and test selection and hypothesis refinement. Part two will cover more intermediate topics, including cognitive theories behind the reasoning process, clinical prediction rules, the threshold model of decision-making, cognitive bias, an overview of common diagnostic errors, and the assessment of clinical reasoning skills. And last, part three is all about quantitative reasoning, how we apply biostats and even concepts from game theory to clinical reasoning. The six topics here will include a biostats crash course, Bayesian analysis, expected value decision-making, expected utility analysis, high value care and the influence of cost, and finally, clinical reasoning in a digital age, from the effect of using an EMR on the reasoning process, to AI-aided diagnosis, to crowdsourcing diagnostic problems on social media. Due to their complexity, the videos for these topics will be a bit longer than in parts one and two. Strong diagnosis, this series on clinical reasoning skills is intended to be a complement to Strong Medicine's series on an approach to symptoms, which itself covers the etiologies of common symptoms along with the appropriate workup, full of diagnostic frameworks and flowcharts. 
so please check out that series as well. The key takeaway points for this introduction to strong diagnosis. Clinical reasoning is the cognitive process by which a clinician makes decisions regarding possible diagnoses and treatment strategies for an individual patient. It's typically subdivided into diagnostic reasoning, also known as just clinical reasoning, and therapeutic reasoning. And last, clinical reasoning is imprecise, probabilistic, and iterative.